Welcome back to Master Glass with me, Livio Lara. We have finally arrived to episode three of this three-part series. And today I am going to taste and we're gonna talk about Crown Royal flavors. Let's get into this. Alrighty, it's good to have you here today. Uh, today we are going to taste Crown Royal flavors and uh, I am gonna preface again that Crown Royal is not paying me to do this. This is just me really diving into this brand and today of course is gonna finish this three part episode. And now uh, we know a little bit about Crown Royal from episode one, which again, here's the link if you would like to look at it, but Crown Royal is made with a blend of 50 different whiskeys. And of course, Crown Royal flavors are made with Crown Royal Deluxe, that recipe that has been then flavored with whatever, of course, flavor is written on the label. Now, what I really like about what Crown Royal does here is they can be this extremely big, uh, amazing brand that is one of the largest sellers in the world, but they also have their reserve uh, uh, which is, or their master series, which is also really eclectic and does some really neat things with barrels and aging and mash bills. But then they also know how to be very playful, which is what they're doing here with these flavors. And I feel like that's a really good way to outreach and bring more people into the whiskey category. And of course, flavored whiskeys have done so. Uh, we have seen an increase in flavored whiskeys, but we've also seen a, seen a big increase in whiskey drinkers. And and a lot of that has to do with flavors. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a try. What I have in front of me here is Crown Royal Vanilla. This one here is just good old Crown Royal flavored with a Matthew Gascar vanilla bean. And there's definitely vanilla. Now Crown already has a lot of vanilla notes in it. So uh, when you have a Crown with vanilla in it, well, of course you're gonna get a lot of vanilla. And that's all. I'm getting from the aroma, maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of like a milk chocolate. So vanilla and milk chocolate. Mm. Overwhelmingly vanilla flavor, uh, almost like a, uh, a very fragrant pipe tobacco. Um, I'm not gonna get too much more into the details of the flavors because in essence, this is just a nice vanilla flavored whiskey, which has its applications. I will often get bartenders that fight the brand, they fight the flavor profile, they almost wanna go lobby for a new flavor. The reality is, is this is the flavor we get and there's plenty of things to do with it and if you, uh, if you wanna get creative, you can do plenty of things with these types of products as well. What do I have here is the salted caramel. This of course is uh, one of their limited editions flavored with salted caramel. Oh yeah, the aroma is immediately really rich on salted caramel. Also getting almost what I would consider butterscotch in this, uh, on the aroma. And rich butterscotch as well. The salt kicks in at the end, kind of brilliant. First time I've ever tried this product, but I like that little uh, saltiness that uh, kicks in after this uh, caramel butterscotch flavor. The butterscotch stays, but the salt kicks in a little better. Uh, actually a very uh, neat uh, flavors going on. Okay, now I'm gonna try Crown Royal Honey and um, on the aroma, I do get that honey, not a whole lot though. I'm getting whiskey with just a touch. If I did not know there was honey in it, I would not detect it on the nose. Maybe a tad, maybe I'm talking myself into it right now. Definitely on the palate there is some, um, the, van the honey is definitely kicking in, but it's almost clashing a little bit with the whiskey. Uh, I don't feel like it's integrated in the best way I would have liked to see it. But nonetheless, and that happens kind of in between. At the beginning, you get this whiskey note, then you get the, the honey that kicks in, then you get a little um, not getting alongness. But then after that, really at the end, my aftertaste right now has a nice whiskey and honey flavor to it. 
Um, so not bad at all. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna taste is Crown Royal Maple. Uh, of course, this is Crown Royal with maple flavors. Let's see what we have going on on the nose. Oh yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, maple syrup, but more of a, I, I forget which one is the, the heavier grade or the bigger grade. I think grade B is more rich than grade A or anyway, very rich. Like there's a large amount of maple aroma going on right now here. Mm. And on the mouth too, a lot. I'm getting a little, it's funny, I'm getting a, a lot more spice on this version that I've gotten in any of the other ones. Um, there's a little, a tight little spice, maybe a slight little burn as well, and a big, big, big uh, maple syrup flavor. I just swallowed a pancake, pretty much, is how my mouth feels. And then let's move on to Crown Peach. We're not gonna unscrew the cap, Livio. And over here, this one here is just made with Georgia peaches and of course, Crown Royal. Now, one of the good combinations that I've always liked is a North American style whiskey, such as a bourbon or a Canadian with peaches. So uh, I have actually never tried this product before, so I'm gonna give this a try. Definitely that fuzzy peach aroma, the skin. It's actually nicely integrated in the whiskey. There's no clashing and and the whiskey is there as is peach, but it's actually very aromatic. Mm. I feel like I need to take another sip of this one because I still had some maple syrup flavors from the previous one. So that was, we'll just call that a palate rinse. Yeah, nice, very, very nice. Not overly sweet, maybe a tad more sweet than how I would like it, honestly, uh, but not abundantly sweet. And so they really did a good job at integrating the flavor of the peach with the whiskey. Again, I don't have a huge sweet tooth, especially when it comes to drinking. So for me, a little less could have done the job, but nonetheless, this is not a peach sugar bomb. It is actually a really good balance between peach flavors and crown. Okay, let me finish with Crown Royal Regal Apple. Of course, this has the aromas of the Regal Apple in it. Oh yeah, it is a bit Jolly Rancher-ish in terms of the apple flavor. When I was a kid, I used to eat those apple candies and when I would crack them, the aroma would burst out and that's what I am smelling. I do not smell any whiskey at all, but of course we know it's in there. So let's try it out. Yeah, it's funny. I'm getting still that really artificial apple flavor. Uh, this is arguably the number one selling of their flavors, I believe, along with the peach. Major, major, major success. Um, and coincidentally, it's kind of the one that I've enjoyed the least in the package here. Let me give it another shot. Yeah, I still get that really Jolly Rancher apple flavor. Or I should have said aroma. And on the palate, it's a little more subdued, the aroma. The aroma really just jumps out at you with uh, apple flavors. Like I said, I uh, I feel like this lineup here is Crown Royal's way of being extremely playful, which I uh, can commend. And again, they're not paying me to say that. I just can appreciate a brand that knows how to reach out to people and people of different walks of life. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and seriously, not really going to make a whole lot of mixology with this. I believe that the uh, flavors of the uh, that they have been flavored with should stand through. So most people might have a tendency of filling these up with a bunch of juices. I am just gonna go ahead and add some soda and some lime. Let's get to the mixing table. 
So when it comes to the mixology for these flavors, of course, if you're really into mixology and if you're really into whiskeys, you probably didn't make it to this point anyway, which I can understand. These are easy mixing beverages. I am not gonna complicate it uh, and strain away from what these are. And what they are are easy drinking flavored beverages. I'm not gonna pile them with, so with uh, juices. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the ice just like that. I wanna say that my favorite one, surprisingly, of all of these was the salted caramel because it had that butterscotch sweetness, but it had that saltiness and I liked the brine to it. So I'm gonna just take this one here and this drink applies to all of them. I am going to just take two ounces of the salted caramel, just like that. Easy peasy. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just top it up with some fever tree soda, just like that. And then this morning when I was at the store, they were actually out of limes. So they had key limes. And I think that actually worked in my benefit because I'm gonna take this key lime here, cut it in half, cut it in a quarter. And I'm just gonna take that guy right there and I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna move these out. And there you go, just a salted caramel and soda with a little lime wedge. And of course, if you want to add some acid, you could press that lime wedge in there. Easy drinking. Yeah, not bad. It's got a place, it's got a time. It took me 12 seconds to make it. I do hope that you enjoyed all three of these uh, episodes of Master Your Glass with Crown Royal. I do hope that you did learn something. I learned a hell of a lot putting it together. Uh, and uh, if you did, give us a like and please do subscribe and come back to Master Your Glass with me, Livio Laro, where you get expert instruction for everyday consumption.